In this video, we're going to walk through all of the different settings that you have available to you as it relates specifically to texture maps. So let's go ahead and dive in and we'll get started. If you want to follow along with this video, uh, in particular using the content that I have here, uh, if you go over to the Unreal Marketplace, just do a search for construction site. Uh, Silver TM was the one that put this together. This is the asset pack that I'm using, so feel free um, to, to follow along if you'd like to. Okay, so again, specifically this video is going to focus exclusively on the texture editor. So before I jump over there, um, I, I just want to show you real quick how I got to this point. So we're going to use this road close sign um, as I think it does a really good representation and shows you exactly what's happening. Uh, but I wanna make one adjustment to the material so it's a little bit more clear um, as you're watching this to see exactly what's happening. So I've just simply clicked the road sign. Um, there is this material, I've double clicked it, which happens to open this guy. Um, and all I'm gonna do is actually go in and turn off the normal map. So unchecking it turns it off. Uh, that's literally all I'm going to change. Um, we're not gonna do anything else uh, with this process. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is if you notice in the rose cloud sign, there's also this diffuse, so you can just double click it, which will open up this texture. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, the first thing that I wanna cover is actually just the UI, really, really quickly, of our texture editor. So again, if you go into your content browser, um, or you open up any texture, you're going to get this window. So just kind of going from the top um, and working our way around in a clockwise fashion, um, all of these are exactly what they what they say they are. So you can actually open, you can save, um, you can go in, change, this is just kind of a global edit, uh, your asset. Um, this is actually a handy one, so if you've got a texture open, you're like, hey, I don't even remember where I got this from. If you do find in Content Browser, it'll actually navigate to your Content Browser exactly where that's at which is really cool. Um, we can also do um, a size map, um, audit assets. I'm not gonna cover that too much because that's actually more of a global function in Unreal, but super, super handy to find out how much does this texture cost, uh, which is really cool. Uh, you can re-import from here, which is actually also available here as well. And then if we go to our window, you can see we can change a few things um, and then help, so we'll ignore that. Um, on our main bar, we've got save and browse. Again, browse is actually gonna do the exact same thing, which if I was in, say for example here, look at something else, and I click browse, it will take me immediately to uh, that in my content browser. Reimport will actually reimport the texture from the file specified in it, um, which I will explain here in a minute once we get to that. Uh, but that's just a quick way to reimport. And then this MIP, which we can check and adjust, which again, I will show in a little bit as well. All right, so kind of, uh, we'll actually come down here to view. Uh, this is a way that we can actually isolate our different channels um, here. Um, I'll also show you too how you can bind that to a hotkey. I find that in my workflow, it's much easier to have a hotkey bound to that than trying to manually click through all of these. Uh, desaturation is exactly what it sounds like. It's a way to just view the texture in a grayscale mode. It doesn't actually desaturate the texture. It's just simply a preview in our window. Uh, background, you can change this as well. So if you've got checkered, you can see here. Uh, in fact, because there is an alpha channel right here, uh, you can see that if it's checkered fill, it goes all the way to the top. If I go solid color, you'll see that. So by default, it's easier with the checker and draw border, which will simply draw a border around the actual texture so you can see exactly where the texture ends. Um, and then we don't need to worry about settings. Um, I'll just open it. You can see here, um, again, a couple things you can change, which is great. You may want to change your texture size, something like 16, which should change this guy, but again, don't, don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, moving over to our details panel. Um, so you can see here, there's a lot of good information at this top in which in fact, we will reference back to this to see exactly what's happening. You can see the imported texture size, the displayed texture, uh, again, which we'll also view here, which is also viewed in our viewport. Max in game, which is a specified max in game texture. The resource size. Uh, this is important. Your resource size is an indication of the actual file size and how much that uh, that particular texture is taking up in terms of memory. Has alpha channel, in this case is true. Method is streamed, format DXT5. We'll see how we can change this. Um, LOD bias and number of MIPS as well. So again, the details panel at the very top is very, very important. We'll reference back to this a lot. 
All right, so moving down, we've got a bunch of different settings here, um, and we'll actually expand some more. We also have a search details, which is very, very handy. So for example, if I wanted to search for brightness, I can start typing and it will isolate those particular parameters. Um, we don't need to worry about the property matrix um, or any of these unless you want to. That's simply just to help you with the organization in there. All right. <clears throat> So before we start going through all the different settings, I'm gonna change one thing real fast, which is, uh, again, if you know me, I love these little show advanced, these little kind of triangles, upside down triangles. There are so many hidden goodies in Unreal um, that are hidden behind this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna work my way from the bottom and expand all these because like I said, we are gonna go in depth on the texture editor. So we wanna see exactly every single setting that we have available to us. So, okay. Um, moving down, kind of wrapping up this, we've got this ability uh, at the bottom to kind of zoom into our texture um, and also change uh, specified zoom levels, scale to fit or scale to fill, um, which are kind of the same, but scale to fit. Um, so you can see as I adjust my window, you can see that it actually um, adjusts it there. So, okay, so before I actually go through this, let me show you real fast how to enable uh, the different hotkeys. So example, if I click in here and I just type Alt 1, 2, 3, and 4 while pressing Alt, you can see that I can quickly toggle between all of my different uh, texture maps. So if I go back up here, you can see as opposed to me clicking individually one by one. So to do that real quick, all I'm gonna do is go up to Edit, Editor Preferences. In here, just type Texture. Um, I believe it is Texture Editor. Yeah, if you type in Texture, editor, you will get this. So you can see here, I've got my hotkeys bound. So alpha, blue, red, uh, green, and red. So they're working backwards. So red, green, blue, alpha, uh, respectively, alt one, alt two, alt three, and alt four. Easiest way to do it is if you just click in new binding, press alt and one at the same time, then you'll get your binding. So that's how we've set that. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and dive in now and actually step through every single process um, and every single parameter that we have for our textures. So the first setting that I wanna hit has to do with our compression. So in our compression rollout, um, we'll go through a few things. Um, it's important that I wanna make a, um, a, a distinction here. Uh, you, it's, it's entirely possible that you'll be working in a pipeline where you may get uh, a handful of texture assets with varying sizes. You may get some very small textures and you may get um, some massive ones, you know, like some 4K, some 8K textures. Um, that is okay. I say that's okay. Um, you're probably, if you're working with this, you're probably shaking your head. No, no, it's not. Um, in a way, it is okay. Uh, and what I mean by that is we've got tools inside of Unreal Editor that allow us to actually override what the source material coming in is. So, for example, if you've got somebody that's been authoring all their textures at 4K, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to render out at 4K in the end. We can change that. So, we do that through um, a few different settings, but the process that you need to be aware of is called cooking. Uh, and what that means is when you go to package your product, you know, so when you are all done, you're getting ready to deploy it, Unreal Engine will go through and actually package everything up. It's, you know, there's optimizations, there's code, snippets, you name it. So the settings that we change in our textures do affect that cooking. We can also see a preview of it in editor. We'll see in our stats how that kind of changes as well. So. Uh, really, the, the, the short, sweet summary of it is um, just because you get a 4K texture doesn't mean you're locked at that. doesn't mean you have to go back to the original artist and say, hey, I need you to change this. We can actually change it in editor, which is really cool. So, okay. So back to our compression settings. So compress without alpha is exactly what it sounds like. If we were to check this, when it goes to cook, it's actually going to discard that alpha information. Why is that important? Well, if you look at a, um, a, a typical texture map, you've got essentially four channels, red, green, blue, and alpha. Here's the kicker though. Your alpha channel cost as much as your R, G, and B combined together. The reason for that has to do with bit depth and when everything is packaged. So again, if you're pushing out a bunch of textures and you've got alphas and stuff like that, this is a way for you to save some information. Now, Unreal is smart enough that if it doesn't have an alpha coming in, typically you don't have to flag this. It will just discard it anyways because there's no information. However, if you're exporting a texture, in this case a Targa, which I believe was authored at 32 bits, to be able to have uh, that alpha, uh, just be aware that this is a way you can override that. Again, if I check this, it will discard the alpha. Of course, we lose that information, but 
I can save some resources with that. Defer compression. Um, really what this is, um, I've got to double check at which part of the rendering pipeline um, and the packaging pipeline this totally affects, but essentially it's just saying, hey, don't compress this, keep it at a high resolution. Um, there are situations where you might want to use it, but by default, you probably should have it on. All right, compression settings. So this is probably the single most important thing out of all of the settings that you have in a texture, uh, in the texture editor that you should be mindful of. Uh, what compression settings are is this actually tells the engine how to process all this. And what I mean by that is um, a, a game engine, with, which is you know what Unreal Engine basically is, is derived from game technology, is um, there's all these little bits of, I, I kind of liken it to like garbage disposals. And what I mean by that is like, you've got a bunch of information coming in and it has to chew through all of the, the bits and the bobs and then spit out an end product. Um, so if you, if you think about it in that way, what compression settings are is kind of telling the engine, hey, I want you to take this texture and go through this garbage disposal, process the information and spit it out. So if we look through the different settings we have available, by default, we've got these different compressions. I'll let you do a Google search. You can figure out what it is. DXT1 and 5, BC1 and 3, and DX11 has to do with the way that texture is processed. Normal map, if you're familiar, again, with materials, um, is probably the most readily apparent, like, aha, I know what that is. Well, a normal map processes differently. Again, it goes through a different processing chain, i.e. the garbage disposal, um, and it uses DXT5, BC5, and DX11, um, on DirectX11, uh, excuse me, compression for that. That's very important because um, really, really, the to, to bring this full circle, when your graphics, your GPU is processing information, your textures get pushed through a certain channel. So normal maps have different information in them. In fact, we can see here, if I just double click this one, this is processing different information than, say, for example, our diffuse, our base color, and all that. So it has to go through a different rendering pipe to be able to do that appropriately, and it does it through compression. So by default, again, Unreal Engine is smart enough to know when you're importing, it will recognize, hey, this looks like a normal map. I'm going to go ahead and set your compression settings to normal map. Generally speaking, you don't have to change this. There are those rare few times if you're doing like a custom normal map or something that Unreal doesn't get it. It's very simple. Just go into your compression settings, click the drop down, and just change it to normal map. All right, let's keep cranking through here. Mask no sRGB. This one is probably the second most important flag that you'll run across. And what that is, is if you're familiar with the texture authoring pipeline, you can do what's called like layered mask, layered textures, stack textures, a uh, bunch of different names for it. But essentially what it is, is you're, you're taking multiple channels um, of your red, green, and blue, and sometimes alpha, and adding information. So if I open up this SRM real quick, I'll show you what it is. So you can see this is set to default, uh, which it may not need to be. Um, so if I go through here, you can see this is my red channel. This is my blue channel my green channel, and there's nothing in alpha. So what's been done here is it's a way for you to be able to use multiple channels in that texture for different material uses. Again, we're not gonna cover that, but the, the key part here, and again, this may actually be incorrect, is when you import that, you wanna change your compression settings, again, for these layered textures, to mass no sRGB. The reason for that is in color space, sRGB has a curve. So it's, it's got a little bit of a, a, a bend to it, for lack of better terms. And so when you're creating a mask, generally speaking, you want it to be values of zero to one. You want a linear curve, linear color space. With, with it set to default DXT1, you're going to have sRGB active. So what that means is that your roughness channel will not display appropriately, nor your metallic. This is a common problem I see a lot when people are importing textures from other programs that say, hey, you know, it looks like this in Substance Designer, Marmoset, any other program besides Unreal, and you're like, it just doesn't look correct here. Chances are 99% of the time it's because you're in SRG mode, uh, SRGB mode for that layer texture. So simply just go in, change your compression settings to masks, no SRGB, it will uncheck that sRGB. You can also override this and uncheck it. But again, uh, if you think again, those, those different garbage disposals, your masks, you'll want to process that as well. All right. Grayscale is exactly what it sounds like. However, be very, very careful with this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually just open up another diffuse so we can see what's happening here. 
Uh, the reason why I say be careful with this is that the general idea and the thought process would be, oh, hey, uh, I've got a grayscale. Well, grayscale should only have one channel because it's gray, uh, so I'm going to save a lot of texture. Um, not always. Uh, in fact, so if I take this one just here for an example, change my compression settings to grayscale. If you watch here, the resource size, we're going to go from 341 kilobytes to 1300 kilobytes. Uh, so that's what I mean by that is that it's not always necessarily a compression savings. So pay attention to your resource size. I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and actually just reset this back so it doesn't affect anything. And we'll close on normal because we don't need that. Okay. Uh, the rest of these, I'm just going to kind of skip over um, because I just want to highlight a couple um, couple ones that you might be uh, familiar with. Um, your HDR, uh, that's going to be if you import any kind of HDRI into your scene, you're going to want to use this because this is actually going to use um, a, a different um, uh, shading algorithm to be able to support that full high dynamic range. So you'll change that. But again, if you're importing HDRI, typically it, it recognizes that. User Interface 2D, this is um, another one that's very important. If you're creating textures for UI, you absolutely need to change this User Interface 2D. The reason for that is whenever you launch your game and you have your UI, um, it will display on your screen. However, by default, if you have this, um, if you're bringing in textures for UI as set to default, they will appear very blurry, what's called mipping. It'll be mipped down. Um, so by flagging this user interface, it'll actually discard those MIT maps and make sure that it renders at full resolution all the time. Uh, so it's very, very important. Alpha, uh, generally speaking, um, and this actually comes from years of working in kind of the, the DCC pipeline, there really, there really hasn't been um, many times where I've needed to use alpha, um, if I'm being honest, because a lot of times I'll just use a layer texture with, no, uh, with mass noise uh, sRGB as opposed to an alpha, but it's there, so if you needed to do it. Um, and again, we'll kind of we'll kind of skip over the rest of these. If you want to look more in the compression settings, look at the documentation, uh, just do a quick research. Um, a lot of these are not inherent to Unreal. In fact, these are mostly just um, the way that you process graphics um, and textures. So, okay, very lengthy on compression settings, but again, I would say that this is uh, hands down the most important thing if you gather anything from this video when you import your textures make sure they're set appropriately because again going back to our garbage disposal example the in, the engine's going to process information you want to make sure that it's processing it correctly okay cool all right let's keep moving on here in compression uh maximum texture size this is really cool so going back to a comment that i said earlier um you absolutely can get author textures into your project above what you intend for it to be. So in this case, you know, imported, this particular texture we're looking at was authored at 2K, so 2048 by 2048, which is great. And it's currently being displayed as 2048 by 2048. We can override this, which is really cool. So if I go into my maximum texture size, and let's say, for example, I type in, uh, we'll use a really low number, like 128. You can see that it, it looks actually pretty crappy. And that's because um, we're not using our imported size, we're using our displayed. So if I reset this, here's what's really cool. So again, paying attention to our, our details. Resource size of this 2K texture is roughly, I wanna say about five, five and a quarter megabytes uh, or 5,400 kilobytes. If I set my maximum texture size to say 128, you can see that that drops significantly. Now granted, it looks terrible because we're up close, but if this object were way off in the distance and we never really get close to it, that would be totally fine. So I just shaved a significant portion of my texture size off by simply just saying, hey, I just want the maximum texture size to be 128. So again, we can take this up, let's say like 512. So you can see from our 2048, taking this down, we can still read it, but we've, again, shaved off a pretty significant amount of resource size. Uh, so that's a great way, again, you can overwrite this, um, which is very good. Okay, lossy uh, compression amount. Um, so really what this means is that when the engine is processing um, the compression side of your texture, this is a way that you can kind of override it. Uh, typically speaking, lossy compression amount and compression quality, default is, totally fine for like 90, 95% of the time. There are situations that you run into where you may have a particular texture that just, the, the way it's mipping down, the way the engine's handling it, 
it just doesn't look right. Um, so this is a way that you can kind of override that to say, you know, hey, you know, Unreal Engine, stop being so aggressive with this. Leave me some more detail, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Again, default should be totally fine. Um, when you start getting into your compression quality, be aware if you don't know how to profile, if you don't know how to run the settings, changing this could get you into a world of hurt where your package size um, is still relatively large because again, you're overriding compression settings that may increase, you know, the the deployment size of of your of uh, of the game. So okay. So that covers compression. Let's go ahead and move on now to um, texture. So I'm going to kind of skip over the power of two and the padding. Um, really what this means is just um, if you bring if you bring a texture in um, and say for example that it's not necessarily um, squared, so 2K, so you've got you know 1024, uh, the typical values where you got 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 496, all of your, your scaled resolution. Be aware that the engine, um, actually this is a really good performance note. Say for example, I brought this texture in as 2049 by 2049, the engine is actually going to round up. So my 2049 by 2049 texture is gonna be as expensive as a 4096 by 4096. The power of two mode is a way that you can force this texture to actually render in uh, power of two. So again, by default, you probably don't ever need to change this. Padding color um, is more, I think, just a visualization so you can see it. sRGB, again, I, 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 I hate that sRGB is actually down here. Uh, makes sense why it's in texture, but again, this correlates a lot if you have, um, if you're bringing you know, uh, a particular texture in that's in linear space versus sRGB, uh, Note, if you're actually getting a lot of information from Substance Designer, most, well, I, I should say some of the more advanced Substance Designer um, authors that create materials know how to change the output from linear, but I want to say by default, something like Substance Designer does generate the textures in linear space. So unchecking sRGB will actually bring it back to the correct color space. But again, if you're using compression settings like mass, no sRGB, you should be fine. But Again, also be aware, you may have some textures that come in as linear, just simply uncheck this and it will change it for you. So it'll recompile. So we'll let that do that, I'll, print, I'll put it back on. Okay, um, X-axis tiling mode, ramp, clamp, and mirror is exactly what it sounds like. Um, if this texture were repeating, you would you could specify and overwrite this. Wrap is just simply gonna say, as that texture um, repeats on a surface, you'll just see it kind of wrap around as an infinite loop. So by default, wrap, is totally fine. Um, we'll skip over the dithered MIP alpha and the alpha coverage threshold. Um, that's again, these are situations you probably won't run into much. Uh, this has to do with some optimizations where you can kind of um, adjust the alpha. Uh, the next thing is actually uh, a one you, you may run into a lot of situations, which is this flip green channel. Now for our diffuse, our base color, will have no effect. I'm actually gonna open up this metal grid because this will be easier to see. Um, by default, I want to say that Unreal wants a normal map as though you were standing inside the normal map looking out. So in this situation, these grommets would be pushed outwards towards, um, but you may have authored it accidentally or somebody would have authored it the opposite way. You can do flip green channel, which you can see is simply just a uh, swizzle is what they call it, where it just inverts. So if I go back actually here to our green channel, <coughs> You can see there, it just simply inverts it. So that's one way of doing it. Again, that's really only pertinent to uh, normal maps because typically speaking, you're not inverting your green channel on your base colors or anything else. So, all right, keep going here. Uh, PVR TC4 is actually a compression setting mostly for mobile. Um, more specifically, I think for the iPhone. Um, I don't know if Android uses this one, but uh, by checking this, you're simply just forcing this texture to compress out there. Again, uh, usually not, um, a time where you would want to use that. Uh, filter mode, um, again, if you want to look at this, research this a little bit later, but this is just a way that you can help with the filtering of your texture. So if we do default, um, this may be a little difficult to see, I'll kind of zoom in here. It's a little bit easier when you have high contrast points, but you can kind of see the aliasing, the stepping on it. If I change this to bilinear, again, this is not gonna show up too much, uh, but this is just a way to um, uh, to process the texture a little bit differently. So you get just a little bit cleaner results, but uh, again, um, not super visible from this. 
Uh, MIP load options, uh, we're actually going to show this here in just a second. Um, but with your MIP maps, what a MIP map is, is when you create a texture, uh, the engine creates subsequently smaller versions of that that a GPU is smart enough to know how to use. And what I mean by that is if this sign were way off in the distance and I had 100 of them, the GPU knows, hey, this is super small on screen. I don't need this full 2K resolution. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to one of these MIPs that's much, much smaller, which we saw with the smaller texture size, saves resources, and the uh, GPU will use that uh, kind of smartly intuitively from that so with your MIP load options this is a way that you can say go ahead and load all the MIPs or just use the first don't do it again it's one one flag to be able to override that we'll skip over asset user data this is a way that you can also kind of uh, for lack of better terms hijack the texture and do some other things so we'll, we'll ignore this for now again that's a much much deeper um, uh, topic on to our file path. So this is actually the original file path that the author created this particular texture. So if I were to go up right now and say re-import, the editor would pop and say, hey, I can't find this file. Um, additionally, what's nice about this is say, for example, you know, uh, you're working with a team, somebody else is doing all the texture imports, and then they dump all these textures off to you, and those textures reside elsewhere on your hard drive that's different than from what the author created, that's totally fine. You can actually go into here, just click the little three, um, the, the little button here, and you can actually load the texture or a new texture and re-import that way. So if you click it, again, you can go up to re-import, repath it, when it re-imports, it looks there. Um, another note that I wanna make that um, I've seen a lot of people kinda get confused on, you don't have to have the original texture. In fact, you don't have to have any of the original um, assets like the static meshes, your animations, anything, any kind of data that you're inputting into the engine, you don't have to have it in your actual project folder. It can reside anywhere. It could be on a separate hard drive, um, on a network share, that doesn't matter. When you import, um, Unreal is actually gonna create the .u asset, which is what you share with your team, with other people that the project ultimately uses. So again, this is why we're seeing the source file path different than where the engine is, but you can always repath it. Okay, on to adjustments now. Um, I'll, I'll go kind of briefly and, and quickly over this because a lot of these have to do with the same thing, which is you can actually adjust your texture in Unreal. Do I recommend it? No. There's other programs out there that are far better and far faster, um, i.e. something like Photoshop, GIMP, a uh, place where you can change it. But it's important to note you can change it. So for example, we have this gray right now. I could take my brightness up to say two. You can see that my texture actually starts getting brighter, which is great. It's cool that this ability is in the engine. Um, but again, you don't have to necessarily worry too much about it. Brightness curve is kind of like a contrast. So I could take this down less contrasty, you name it. So um, again, this is kind of a nice little uh, tweak you can make. Um, I could see situations where, again, you're working with the team, you don't have access to the original texture, maybe you don't even have access to um, a program like Photoshop, GIMP's free, so you can have that. Um, but you just need to make a quick change and you don't really wanna go through another DCC program, you can do that. So I could say, you know, oh, well, this was actually not wide enough, I'll take that a little bit. And there you go. So um, again, all of these settings do take effect together. Again, saturation, I'll show you there. So we can bump up the saturation a lot. Uh, so really cool that this is available in there and you can change that. So, okay, keep moving on. In fact, we are almost, we are nearing the finish line here, which is awesome. Um, level of detail. So uh, going back to um, the MIP settings, in fact, I'm gonna show you real quick what's happening with MIPS if you're not familiar with that process. Um, so I'm actually gonna go back up to our toolbar here and check this little box that says MIP level. So as I start taking this up, you notice that the texture gets smaller and smaller and smaller. That is the MIP generation. So um, the engine in this case, I believe, uh, yeah, gave us 12 MIPS. So you can see the highest level, because it starts at zero, so 12, is just a one by one texture. So that's just literally, uh, what would that be? Two pixels, no, it's just one pixel. Um, so again, this is the, the GPU is going to use this to help to optimize performance, but we can also do some things to help with that process as well. So I'm gonna uncheck the mid map level and go back down to here. Um, so let me actually show you real quick here. I believe it's LOD bias. Um, if I change this to four, yeah, okay. So. Continuing with this, so my MIP level of four, so let me change this back to zero. Go to a MIP level of four. 
You can see here displayed is 128 by 128. I'm going to uncheck this, set this back to 4, and there's that 128 by 128. So effectively what I've done here is I haven't specified, which is very similar to what we did at the top here on maximum texture size, I've actually just specified use this MIP, um, and that is this LOD bias, which is great. I want to keep this on here real quick just to show you what the MIP gen settings are. So I'm going to zoom into this one just a little bit more so you can see it. Um, and you can also see on this road sign here. What's really cool about our MIP map generation is that we can actually change a couple things. So we can blur or sharpen. Typically you're going to use sharpen and here's why. So I'm going to take it all the way to 10. So if you notice on, um, in fact, this is, let, me, let me go up to where the road closed is. You can see if I change this back to default, you can see that things get a little blurry. So by taking it to sharpen, um, the advantage that we gain here is it helps that texture to be a little bit sharper. So if it's way off in the distance and it's too blurry, this is one way, again, in your MIP gen settings, this is one way that you can quickly change um, how that MIP generation is happening, which is again, really, really cool and very, very handy. Uh, blur is gonna do exactly what it sounds like. So again, if you needed to override it. Um, so again, this is kind of interrelated, so you can do your LOD bias, so you can see exactly what it's doing. Uh, but again, a way that you can control that. Go ahead and go back out to scale to fit, and we should be good. Okay, uh, texture group and the level of detail. Um, this actually kind of goes hand in hand with um, a little bit of what the, the principle we talked about early on with the compression settings. This is just another way for you to kind of specify um, this does tie back to your project settings. In fact, um, if you're an artist, this is probably not something you'll take, uh, you'll, you'll do. Um, engineers definitely know where this stuff is, or at least should know where this stuff is. Uh, but in the editor, you can actually specify a few different things. For example, weapon hailing back from like old school Unreal Tournament days. Um, the assumption was is that if a player had a weapon, it's close on screen, so you're gonna wanna have more fidelity, have things better. Um, so that's why you have kind of this weapon um, uh, texture group. It's just a way for the engine to process it and make it look better. So that's all these are. Again, generally speaking, most of the time you're going to keep it to world. Um, one thing you may run into, and I believe it's in here, um, is if you are creating textures for a UI, again, we go back up to our compression settings. We're going to want to use user interface, but sometimes the editor, when you're packaging something weird happens, um, you may want to go back in your texture group and just say, hey, go ahead and process this on UI. Um, the reason being is your textures may load into world space. You may be very, very hard work constrained, i.e. something like the switch. Um, so you, you may have to flag in this texture group, hey, go process on the UI don't process in the world, don't take up that memory. So uh, that's what texture group is. Uh, preserve border. Um, again, if you highlight over this, it's, uh, you know, the border will be preserved during mid map generation. So if there's, again, some detail you have pressed right to the edge of your texture, uh, you may want to check that. Um, so again, when it mips down, um, that is important. Downscale, um, uh, Let's see exactly what it says there. So you can kind of look at that. You can do, uh, you can actually do different overrides. So for example, on the downscaling, you can have it on um, different platforms, whatever it is. Downscale options, very similar to what we saw before with sharpening and all that. Uh, never stream. So um, in the editor, you can actually stream textures, which is um, one way to kind of save on memory, but you may find that there's glitches whenever it loads in or it's doing something. So you can change never stream to where it just preloads that. So it's in there. Um, and then global force resident MIP levels, uh, we'll, we'll ignore that. Okay, that's level of detail. Compositing, I'm not actually gonna show how this works per se, uh, but basically what a composite texture is, is it's a way for you to help in the MIP generation process, specifically um, more with the adding the normal roughness to red, green, blue, and alpha. Um, it's a way that can help you as things are mipping to keep some detail and or help with visual fidelity in the distance. So um, I'll let you do a quick search because there's a way you can actually author a compositing texture, which helps out in that. But again, 99% of the time, you're never gonna use this. So, okay, that should make you an expert now on the texture editor inside Unreal Engine. So that will wrap up this video. Um, I hope it helped. Um, again, there's a lot of settings in here that a lot of people don't know that you have control over. So um, 
Yeah, I hope that helps. Um, you'll probably see in a separate video where we go through profiling and actually adjust some of these. Um, but that is literally a crash course in the texture editor. So I hope it helped. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys' support. Um, if you guys have suggestions for things that you're having trouble with in development or just want more information on, absolutely drop a comment. Um, I will get it added to the queue so we can get those pumped out. Um, so as always, really appreciate it. We'll catch you on the next one.